Hey ladies and gents, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. Yes, ladies and gents, it is finally time for my first winner's predictions. Now, I wanted to get these done, my first bunch of predictions done early before any of the precursors, including WDA, DJ, PGA, just nothing. Just completely from what we've seen before with Critic Choice and Golden Globes and from the past in general, what I think has the best shot at winning at the Oscars. But as always, ladies and gents, before we get into it, please remember to like, subscribe and comment. If you need extra, just to ding that little bell. And also, please remember to scan these barcodes, go to links, comments, or follow the names on your screens to follow my social medias. And my TV is on once again, I'm gonna turn it off. But anyway, ladies and gents, going straight into it, best picture. Yes, I know, I'm stubborn on this one, but I'm not ready just yet to move Charles Cargo 7 away from a number one. I think it is still the front runner for best picture. And honestly, I will change my best picture prediction if Nomadland starts picking up at um, places like PGA and WGA and DJ, of course. But for now, I'm sticking with trial. But honestly, I think that trial could be the upset till the end because it is such a film that could win best picture. Fast paced, entertaining, a great ensemble cast a feel-good ending it is just what the oscars eat up to and people like to use examples like oh this could be nomadland will be the moonlight or the parasite this year what you got to remember with films like moonlight and parasite is that parasite is a film that's very hard to dislike even if you're not into foreign language films is and outside of the fact it's a foreign language film it's very fast-paced and entertaining and moonlight whilst it's not as entertaining as la la land is you got to remember people got bored of la la land not only that though, but whilst Moonlight isn't as feel good as La La Land is, you still very much feel the emotions when watching it. And I feel like that's equally as important for Oscar voters. So I'm sticking with Charles Chicago 7 at number one. Moving down the list, I would say the number three is Minari, but oh, honestly, this has just got to be a two-way race. Because even if Promising a Woman takes the original screenplay win, which will probably mean that Trial's done for winning Best Picture and it will go to Nomadland, I just can't see anything else winning Best Picture. Um, Minari would somehow have to win director and or original screenplay, both of which I don't think are happening. But if I had to choose what is number three in terms of what's most likely to win Best Picture, going off the love for it and the preferential ballot, I would say it's Minari. I just spoke about promising one, but I'll just say again, it could win Best Original Screenplay and launch itself into Best Picture that way, but it's doubtful. And then Mank, Judas, Sam and Metal and The Father... I'm so happy to see that the bottom three are here because they are the outside sort of shots of many people and it's so good to see that they're all here and they even beat Marrying to that bottom and One Night of Miami. I'm glad that next year they're scrapping this whole, like, you know, not having up to 10 and they will in fact have to have up to 10 because it's so disappointing when you think that a film like One, one Night of Miami, Marrying could get in but oh well it is what it is if i had to choose i i, I like this top eight a lot and my rainy one on mammy would just be a nice inclusion but i would happily take i would happily swap out one night mammy and my rainy black for two of these films because i think they're just much better best picture nominees moving into best director chloe Zhao. chloe Zhao is probably gonna win my friend jacob at music city drive-in me and him mainly do oscar um predictions jacob still has david fincher at number one and I can't disagree with him too much because even though I still I still believe Chloe Zhao is number one, David Fincher is heavily overdue, and I feel like he could maybe win DGA, then win the Oscar, win nothing else. Same thing happened when it was between him and Tom Hooper. Um, everyone thought that it was David Fincher's year; they were going to do the right thing and honor him. It didn't happen because they just couldn't help themselves. And uh, I still think Chloe Zhao is going to win DGA, but watch out for the DGA upset. It, could very well happen number three is emerald fennel oh it feels so good to not have one but two female directors in this category feels so good um she's probably not gonna win emerald fennel isn't but she she so deserves this nomination she did such an amazing job directing promising a woman i can't wait until it's released on 4k and blu-ray in my country so i can just buy it and watch it on the constant but i'm happy to see her nominated same goes lee isaac chung but again he's not gonna win but it's nice to see him here. And Thomas Vinterberg was the best upset you could ever ask for. Because not only were they just such great nominations in general, but they were such unexpected surprises, but welcome surprises. Thomas Vinterberg, you are more than welcome to be here, my friend. Um, Eric Anderson at Awards Watch. Bravo, mate. No one saw this coming except you, so nice prediction. You must feel, be pretty chuffed with yourself. Best actress. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm not joking. 
I would say Kerry Mulligan and Francis McDormand and Viola Davis we have like the edge but honestly this can go anywhere and I don't know what to do with this category. I'm having Kerry Mulligan at number one because she's got critics choice now of her and Andrea Day I would say she's most likely. I'm not going to go on about this category too, mo too much because I'm just going to say the same about all of these. I would say there's about a uh, 30% chance between this 30% chance Carrie Mulligan, 25 for Ola Davis, 25 for Francis McDormand, and then 10% for Andre Day, and 10% for Vanessa Kirby. But still, 10% is still a pretty good odd. And honestly, like, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know at the moment. And that, that's just what I think for the moment, but it could change. So <laughs> moving on before I have a heart attack. Actor in leading role is for sure Tragic Bozeman. If there was going to be a place he didn't win, it would be Crick Shorts Golden Globes. But he's got them both. So it's just completely just, it's just the, it's just the front runner now. And it's going to, he's just going to win. And I can't really argue with it. He kills at Marini. And Anthony Hopkins and Riz Ahmed, I would say equally as good as him. But in a year when you can, when they're equally as good, and either in Hopkins' case, he's won before. Riz Ahmed is young. He's got the nomination. He's well respected at this point. He can definitely win in the future. It seems like the right thing to do. And I don't think anyone's going to be bitter about Bozeman winning come Oscar night. Actress in a supporting role. I'd say Ya Jung Yun's the front runner, but like actress in the leading role. I don't really know what to do with this category, but I'd say the two front runners fighting out are Yo Jung Yun, and I have to say this, Maria Bakalova, which is incredible because they were the two critics' darlings, and very rarely do you see the critics' front runners actually becoming Oscar front runners like this. Never, ever happens, really, so it's kind of remarkable. I would say Yo Jung Yun has the edge because it's more of an Oscars film. And if the Oscars want to honour Minari in any place, this will be the only place I think they realistically can do it. So I would say she's got the edge, but Mira Bakalova is the only actress who got in everywhere. So you can't really ignore that. And I would be happy with her winning as well, because she had to do most of her performance, most of her performance in like one take, and then that was it. And think about Rudy Giuliani seeing the baby going to a doctor because a baby and her if you've seen it you know what they're talking about that takes a great actress and the fact this is her first like proper professional role like i know she did small acting gigs before this is like her first big film and the fact that she was able to do what she did can't really argue with it and then the number three is olivia coleman because there's a sliver of a chance you could still win i'm waiting to see what sags do i was about to say baftas was going to nominate baftas sag will be my pick for best supporting actress because back has critics choice which is fair enough she's nominated here jodie foster got golden globes but she wasn't even nominated here so it's really going to be a case of in my opinion whatever gets the sag win is going to be my front runner for the oscar and then Glenn Close and Amanda Seyfried are kind of done. Like, some people think Glenn Close could win because of the fact she's overdue. <sighs> for this film, uh, I don't know. Glenn Close is desperate for an Oscar at this point. There's another film that she's done with Mila Kunis. I can't remember the name of it, um, where she plays the exact same character by looks things in the trailer. And it's like, oh, Jesus, you're desperate, aren't you, Glenn? Moving on to Best Supporting Actor. Uh, yeah, I'd say Daniel Kaluuya's got this. But I want to bring up something. They nominated Lakeith Stanfield in supporting when he was being campaigned in lead. So the Academy had this overwhelming group of people that wanted to see Lakeith get nominated. And they all took it amongst themselves, put him in supporting to see if it would happen and it worked. That shows a big love for Judas and Black Messiah, which is good. But at the same time, it could split votes. Because I know there's more, more people than this in the Academy. But say there's a thousand people in the Academy, just hypothetically. And let's say... 350 with a moment clue, yeah. 250 went with Stanfield, 400 of them went with Sash Barry Cohen, Leslie and Jr. That could pave the way for their win. I want to see Clue win. I think he's the second most deserved. I've seen the most deserved Paul Racy, but I'm just happy he's nominated. I don't think he has a chance of winning. But I would be happy with Leslie and Jr. and Sash Barry Cohen winning. And I'd say until the end, they have the shot because of this split nomination. But it's unlikely. Expect to see Daniel Kaluuya take the stage. Best Adapted Screenplay. I can't really argue with Nomadland not being the front runner after its Critics' Choice win, and the fact it's front runner for Best Picture. But I really don't want it to win here. I like Nomadland. I'd be more than happy for winning Best Picture, but don't give it a win in adapted screenplay. It's not a screenplay film. I'd much happily see One Night at Miami take this. I love that screenplay, and but at the end of the day, with that Best Picture snub, it does make me doubtful. I have the Father at number three, and oh, I'm seeing the Father next week at a film festival. I'm so so excited and I, I'll be reviewing it on my channel I'm so happy I was able to grab a screener of it 
I'm so excited. Then I would have seen all the Best Picture nominees. I'll have a review out for it. But from what I've heard, it's a very screenplay film based, based on a play, and the screenplay is very well written, so that could also win. And then the White Tiger and Borat's obviously going to move film. I'm so surprised that Ma Rainey was taken over by White Tiger and Borat, but they're both great wins. I'm not sure how I feel about Borat getting nominated because I don't know how much of a screenplay film that is. I'd have to do a bit of my own personal research because I, I'm not going to lie, I don't know, but it's nice to see Borat has got more than one nomination, I guess. Original screenplay, it's 45% Charles Cargo 7, 45% Promising Woman, and 10% Minari. Get those odds, put them on a wheel, spin it, and whatever lands on. <sighs> we don't know, do we? But it's probably going to be Charles Chicago 7. I know I said both 45%, but maybe he's like 45.1%. I can't really not have Charles on one here because it can't win director if it's not nominated. And if I'm going to say it's a front of best picture, I had to have it winning screenplay. So I'm going to do that for now. But things could change. Best cinematography, Nomadland. Nomadland. I love how at one point we all thought it was so destined to be Mank. But No Man Land just, just seemed to just take on the hype Mank once had and it's running with it and No Man's probably winning here. Mank would be the upset because it does have it is black and white with, you know, like the the lights beaming in and everything and maybe they won't be able to help themselves, but it's doubtful I think No Man Land running here. Moving on. Oh, another fairly predictable one. Best costume design it is gonna go to Man Rainey's Black Bottom. The upsets will be Mank, maybe Emma, but again this is another very predictable one. I will be making my way through some of these more quickly if i think that they're more predictable or they're smaller category which i know you guys maybe not aren't, aren't as interested in if i don't know much to say because i don't want i don't want to waste you guys' time you're busy people i can imagine best film editing i'd say this is charles Cargill seven it even got critics choice well no it tied critics choice sound of metal and i would say sound of metal is a runner-up if they don't love charles Cargill seven it doesn't win best picture i would say sound of metal could very well win here because sound of metal is very slickly edited it really helps tell the story and i can absolutely see it being the upset um nomadland is kind of like in the middle because i i thought it could get snubbed because it's like um it's not like very kind of like flashy wow look at me i'm editing so but um so they could very much snub it because it's a lot of long shots and they snubbed 1917 roma birdman but it got in and i can't really go against it no man land does have very good editing probably was my number four because if i had to choose outside of trial no man land what it would be the most likely to win best picture it would be promising young woman but nah and then the father's my number five um i haven't really got much of an explanation of why the father's number five there apart from i thought that's a sensible top four makeup and hairstyling um honestly my Rain's Black Bottom at this point is the front runner. I was very stubborn on Hillbilly could still win, and I still think it can. But I'm gonna get, I'm gonna change my number one to My Rain's Black Bottom until I'm proven otherwise. Pinocchio, on the other hand, has amazing my make makeup has amazing makeup, and it would be my pick for what to give for what to give the win for best makeup. And if the Oscars want to want to do it, I really think they can. Absolutely think they can. Best production design, um. Um, Mank, Mank's winning. It's even though Mank desperately underperformed at the Crick Circles, it still swept production on the Crick Circles. Mank is absolutely winning. I cannot em emphasize to you enough how much I'm just certain Mank's winning here. This, if even if Mank only wins at one place with all of its nominations, it will be production design. I can assure you. I would just low like to say I'm happy to see that they nominated the father because obviously I haven't seen it personally, but from what I've seen of it and what how I know it tells the story, it's really nice to see that they appreciate that. And Tenet, I just so didn't think it was happening because like oh, I I didn't think it was happening already, but then I knew that it was having screener issues. I was like, well, there's no way it's getting production sign, but the Academy actually did it. So thank you, Academy. It really deserves that nomination. Things of the world, I guess I can't argue with, but you guys know how I feel about that film. I'm moving on before I get mad. Best score. Um, again, Soul is absolutely winning. I'm going to move on for the winner because Soul is absolutely winning. It is sweeping, sweeping Crick Circles, now Crick's Choice and Golden Globes, BAFTAs, and then Oscars are next. Let's be realistic. That's just what's going to happen. All right, I'm gutted. I am gutted. I would have loved to have seen Spike Lee getting for director and Defy Plus getting for the picture, but the most realistic thing was Daryl Lindo, and I can't emphasize to you enough how upset i am daryl lindo getting i thought gary Mann was good in mank but he definitely doesn't deserve to get nominated for daryl lindo like why would you do that like you guys saw my video and how i reacted i just can't, i just can't believe that i thought the golden glows was just like a one-off 
but I just don't understand why all of these award shows just don't want to nominate Dara Lindo, especially over Gary Oldman. Like, come on, are you serious? But anyway, it is what it is. Oh, Gary Dara Lindo, you'll always be the best best actor winner in my heart, and I know many's. But um, I'm happy to see that Defy Blood's got in for score because it's a fantastic score. I did get my hopes up thinking that it could get nominated other places because it got score, but oh well, at least it got in somewhere. Extra credit goes to Minari, which has a beautiful score. I was really worried that it won't make it in, but I'm so glad it did. And that composer can just be the composer for every film from now on, as far as I'm concerned. He can compose my life. He'd, he'd just make every situation better. Best song. I'm still sticking with Speak Now from when I'm at. It's my top, that's my number one. But it getting snubbed at best picture does make me worried that maybe the academy don't love it as much as we thought they would and then maybe they will go with oc from the life ahead um which i'm not really for i'm gonna be honest i'm not a fan of diane warren it's not if i thought she deserved to win i can go out of my own personal bias and say they deserve to win for example david finch is my favorite film director do i think he deserves to win this year absolutely not but it's just not a well it sounds good when you listen to Italian but translate the lyrics the lyrics are terrible and the music's nothing good like why don't please Oscars please don't sn don't snub Speak Now for the win I really if Speak Now so deserves the win um even Who's Thick um from Eurovision Song Contest would be better a better winner than OC um Happy to see Fight For You from Judas got in and I'll hear my voice I like Charles Glass having an awful lot. I'm a big defender of it, but that is such a shit song. Why would you do that? Well, make him, I'm going through these at a good, good pace. I'm, I, I like this. I like this a lot. Best sound. Uh, sound of Metal is going to have no problem just strutting into the Oscar ceremony, taking its Oscar and going home. Because Sound of Metal is winning, and I'm so happy about this. Don't get me wrong. Mank uses the sound brilliantly. And maybe in a year, like, if, like, the category was still split, because obviously it'd be the first year in a long time it isn't, I would maybe say it would be nice to see Sound of Metal take mixing and then Mank take editing, or vice versa, because they both deserve a sound award. But at the end of the day, Sound of Metal just is does deserve the sound award not only is it the better sound but it it's what helped tells the story and really shows you how Riz Ahmed's character is dealing with the fact that he's going deaf and in fact is deaf at one point I'm really happy to see Soul Made in I don't think it would but nonetheless I'm happy I don't understand why animated films keep getting snuffed for sound because they're just as good as any other film but it's even harder to add the sound to animated film because they had to do it all from scratch all from scratch and build a world around these films and i think that's just an amazing thing to do and a soul would you know what i people won't like me for this soul may actually be my preferred winner i, I know sound of metal is probably going to win i'm happy for it to win i'm really happy sound of metal is winning but i think soul may be the equally deserved winner best visual effects um as max joe likes to say it's tenet versus midnight sky take your pick um I'm none the wiser as you are. I would say Tenet has the better shot of winning here because if I had to choose out of these films, what would be the most likely to get a Best Picture nominee? Not that any of them were likely, but I would say Tenet. So I'm going to put that as my number one. Equally, though, Midnight Sky has amazing visual effects and only a few years ago they gave it to First Man, which is another space film. So it does show that they may do it, but Tenet has the more subtle visual effects, which they've shown to like more. So I'm going to go with that. By the way, it's really nice to see Love and, Mon Love and Monster made it in here. I know no one saw it coming at all, but it's such a cute little film. Like, why not have Love and Monsters here? It's a week here in the visual effects. Give Love and Monsters some love, eh? Best animated feature, Sal. <laughs> You're never going to get over Tracy Morgan saying that. But yeah, Sal's winning Best Animated Feature, no doubt in my mind. Um, Wolfwalkers Onward and Over the Moon all equally deserve nominees. And then, I'm, you know, I watched Sean the Sheep farmageddon movie the other day with my um younger siblings and i'd already seen crude too but i would actually say sean the sheep's the more deserved nominee and i'm really happy to see it here so good for you sean the sheep movie um but yeah soul's winning if you go against that um i respect the bravery but i don't really know what to tell you best documentary feature documentary feature are just so bizarre you never know what you're going to get from them but it appears now that even though people worry about the snub Time is looking like the most likely winner. It's the most timely this um over this past year because obviously Black Lives Matter has really taken a stand um over the past year. 
Um, and if the Oscars want to go with the socially most relevant film, which they sometimes do, Time would be the perfect one. Equally, I've seen Collective and I love it. It would be my personal pick. I also love Time, by the way. I think this the, the past year was so strong for documentary features, actually. So... Yeah, I'm disappointed that MLK FBI didn't make it in. All in the fight for democracy and especially boy states were equally deserved. But these would be my top two to get the nominees and my personal ballots. I'm happy to see that they at least made it in. Crip Camp outside of the top two would be the most likely to win if it wasn't these two. And I still think it's neck and neck between these two. So that's why it's my number three. And then my Octopus for Teacher and the Mole Agent, I just kind of stuck one at four one at five because i don't really know where to put them i'd say they both has an equal equal chance um but still they're not winning so what can you do eh best international feature film if minari was here it would probably be winning but oh my god is enough around winning here it is just so winning it's just winning like it wasn't locked already it's got a director nomination there's there's no way i i, I hate i'm sorry to have to say it like this because i try not to rule anything out but this is the one catching one anywhere else where i'm just so certain that there's no way anything else can win kuvadi zeda and collective would be the upset but no way not happening i would just like to say the academy don't seem to nominate films from hong kong korea um japan much at all so i'm really happy to see better days made in by the way and i'm looking forward to seeing it and i hope it's as good as i've heard it is i'm gonna go through the shorts really quickly i don't really have much to say about them if i'm being pr pristinely honest um i have seen a good handful of them i'm trying to make my way through them because um the shorts are actually some of the best of the year and some of the most powerful and i would really um recommend you watch the shorts but i'm still making my way through them I'm trying to watch as many as i as i can get access of um animated short Owl was my personal runner-up for what could win, but it wasn't even nominated. So if anything it happens, I love you is just so winning at this point. And I can't go against that nomination at all. It is heart-wrenching, but beautiful. It's so good. It's on Netflix or Disney Plus. Whoops, how have I forgotten that? I'll put it up on your screen. I'm really sorry. Awkward. Um, but yeah, absolutely winning. It is amazing. I loved it. Best documentary short, I went with a love song from Latasha because that's the number one on Gold Derby, so I thought why not? And then best live action short, I've gone with the letter room, because I've heard it's the most acclaimed out of all of these. Um it's got a star in which usually helps. Like last year when the neighbours window won, and um, this year it's letter room with um Oscar Isaac. So I'd say that's the number one. I'm um, feeling through, I have seen, I know I've brought up already, but I would recommend you watch Feeling Through. It's on YouTube and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic and had a real touching ending to it that i think a lot of people will appreciate anyway ladies and gents with that that rounds out my first winner's predictions for the 2021 oscars um my next one of these will probably be i'll either make one or two more but the next one of these will be at some point after some of the more main awards ceremonies so pj um uh, bafta sag so probably my second one will be just before the oscars so excited times eh anyway ladies and gents Thank you very much for watching. Um, please feel free to click down below on my channel to find more videos that you may be interested in. But until next time, ladies and gents, so long for now.